Hi, my name is Lisa Miller and I'm a biophysical chemist at the National Synchrotron Light Source 2 at Brookhaven National Lab. And today I'm going to talk to you about how we use, use the synchrotron to study a potential treatment for Alzheimer's disease. So most people have heard about dementia and it's an umbrella term that describes a range of symptoms and memory loss. In Alzheimer's disease, which occurs in the brain tissue, vascular dementia occurs in the blood vessels. That represents 70 to 90 percent of dementias. Statistics show the magnitude of the disease. Alzheimer's disease affects 5 million Americans today with health care costs of $305 billion per year, which could be as much as $1.1 trillion per year by 2050. Worldwide, Alzheimer's disease is expected to affect upwards of 106 million people by 2050. And the primary risk factor for Alzheimer's disease is age, but we absolutely have no cure as of today. So what's actually happening in the brain in Alzheimer's disease? So looking at the brain in Alzheimer's, what you'll see is on the left, um, you see these bright green spots. Those are not supposed to be there. Um, they're actually a buildup of protein called amyloid beta protein, uh, which causes these plaques in the brain. So how does this actually happen? This cartoon can show you. So what you're looking at in this picture are brain cells, which are in purple, and these connections between the brain, between the brain cells are what causes memories. Um, and in Alzheimer's disease, you have this protein called the amyloid precursor protein, which is in blue and yellow in the bottom left. Um, a little scissors or an enzyme comes along and it cuts that amyloid precursor protein to form this little tiny protein called amyloid beta, which then clumps together and these clumps form around the plaques, which you're seeing in yellow. Um, they form around the, the these, these clumps are the plaques, they form around these connections. Um, and when they form around these connections, they break the connections, causing memory loss, and the brain cells then die. So current treatments for Alzheimer's disease, all they do is stop the progression of the disease. They actually don't, um, they aren't cures for the disease. Um, so one major angle for drug development right now in Alzheimer's um, is to target dissolving these amyloid beta plaques uh, and therefore preventing them from forming in some way. So what you see on the left of this slide in September of 2022, so um, just last year, the Food and Drug Administration approved a new drug called lecanemab, which binds to these small amyloid beta proteins um, aggregates and prevents them from growing larger. And this has been good progress. The disease still progresses, um, but a slower, at a slower rate. This is encouraging, but it's still not a treatment, um, a cure for the disease. So interestingly, um, many years ago, there was this theory that aluminum pots and pans actually caused Alzheimer's disease. Uh, and I had a colleague that was very curious as to whether this was true. Um, so we took some human op uh, brain autopsy tissue and we put them into the x-ray microscope at the synchrotron to see if there was any aluminum. We didn't find any aluminum, but in fact what we did find is both copper and zinc. Um, and this copper that we found was not metallic copper like you'd find in a wire. Uh, it was ionic copper, so it was water soluble. Now you wonder why is there copper in your brain, but actually you need copper in the brain in order for it to function. Um, it's required for blood formation, for energy, for brain function, uh, but there isn't supposed to be copper in these amyloid beta plaques and nobody knew before this that they were actually there. So we thought, well, if we can move the copper, remove the copper from the plaques, will it help to dissolve those plaques or prevent new ones and prevent new ones from forming? So um, we wrote a grant to the National Institutes of Health who thought that was a really good idea, and so they funded our team for four years to test this hypothesis. All right, so this was our experiment. Um, we took a molecule called a chelator, uh, which is designed to remove metal ions um, from proteins by binding to them very tightly. Um, once they're bound to the chelator, they then go into the bloodstream and they're broken down by the body. So in this study, the chelator that we used was called tetrathiomolybdidate, or TTM for short. It's been used in humans in the past um, to slow tumor growth and also for cancer patients. Um, and it's also been um, used to remove excess copper in a disease called Wilson's disease, uh, which is a hereditary disease that is, uh, causes a buildup of copper because the body doesn't know how to metabolize it. 
So fortuitously for us and our experiment, the center of this TTM molecule has a molybdenum ion, or MOLY alcohol for short. Um, and and uh, so not only could we use TTM to try and remove copper from the plaques, we could use this MOLY x-ray signal to see where the TTM was actually located in the tissue. So before studies are actually done in humans, it's typical to perform these studies in animal models. So uh, we worked um, with a rat model of Alzheimer's disease developed by our collaborator, Bill Van Nostren at the University of Rhode Island. Uh, and we treated these animals for six months. Um, half of them were treated with TTM, and then the other half were a control. They were just treated um, with saline. So, in order to do these studies, we needed a synchrotron. So, what you're looking at here on the left are our samples. So, we take um, basically tissues or isolated blood vessels from the brains of these rats, uh, and we put them on an X-ray transparent film, and we mount them, um, and you can see the orange arrows pointing to the tissue on the left. We mount them, and we put them in the beamline um, uh, at the synchrotron. The setup at the beamline is what you're seeing at the right, uh, and what we, what we do is we put the um, sample right in the center and we shine the x-ray beam, which is yellow, uh, and then it gives off fluorescence and lots of different energies of fluorescence depending on the metals in the sample, so you get all different elements are given off and our detector is sensitive to those different elements, so we could measure all the different metals all at the same time. Now, amyloid plaques are very, very small. Um, they're about this, uh, a few microns in size. They're about a hundredth of the size of a human hair. And so because of that, that's why we need the synchrotron to actually uh, to do these studies. Okay, so let me show you what the data looks like. In the center of this picture, you're looking at a um, spinal cord just taken with a regular light microscope. And um, this is, and what we get from each pixel in our x-ray image is an entire spectrum, which is what you see on the left in black and white. Um, and each of those peaks represent a different metal in the tissue because they have a different x-ray emission, fluores fluorescence emission energy. This works very much like your cell phone camera where it can detect reds, greens, and blues to put a color image together. But in this case, our different channels are different metals. So with our x-ray data, we can measure the signals in the iron channel, for example, and we can take, get a picture that looks like this one, uh, where we're actually seeing neurons in the brain tissue. If we do the same thing, but we instead look at the copper channel, that's more sensitive to the white matter in the tissue, and that's what you see in the center image. We can do the same thing with zinc and so on, and zinc shows us the nuclei from the individual brain cells. And since we collect this entire data set all at the same time, we can actually combine that image and we get all, the, um, all those colors, um, all those channels combined to see where the different elements overlay. And that's what you're seeing in the bottom image. So that's just an example of what actually happened in our um, rat study. So the first experiment that we did is we looked at these rats that were not treated with TTM. We isolated some of their blood vessels and what you're seeing now is a photograph of just through a regular light microscope where red is the blood vessel and green is the amyloid beta plaque. Um, when we look at this image, however, with the x-ray microscope and we look at the copper channel, what you're seeing in those bright bluish green spots is where the copper is located. And if you compare the left image and the, and the right image, the copper and the plaques are showing up at about the same spot. So as expected, we see copper in the plaques. Now, we took a drop of our TTM solution and we just put it right on top of that piece of tissue. And we took another x-ray picture of the same sample and we looked at the copper image. And in this case, the copper was gone. So the TTM was actually able to remove the copper from those blood vessels as we expected it to happen. Um, and so we don't see any, any more copper in that x-ray image. But looking at that same data set, but looking at the MOLLE channel, the TTM channel essentially, we can see that even though copper was gone, the molybdenum, the TTM was still there stuck to the blood vessels. So that's what happened in the lab, but we wanted to see what happens now in the rat. So this is what we did. First, we looked at those same rats again that were not treated with TTM, and we see what we just saw on the last slide where there's copper in the amyloid beta plaques. The bright green plaques on the left go with the bright blue spots on the right. Now, if we look at the rats that were treated in the laboratory, uh, treated in um, vivo with the TTM, you can see that um, not only did the copper not go away, there was actually extra copper in those plaques. 
And this was completely unexpected. Um, we, would, we did not at all expect to see more copper. We, wanted, we expected to see the copper go away with the TTM treatment. So what's actually going on here? Um, so hopefully this cartoon can help to explain it. Um, first of all, we know, we saw that TTM does not remove copper from the amyloid beta plaques. And TTM looks as though it's binding to the plaques and bringing copper to them. So in this picture that you're seeing right there, the red is the blood vessels in the blood. Um, the uh, yellow is the TTM. Blue is the copper. And then green are your amyloid beta plaques. What happens here is the TTM comes um, through the blood. It crosses over the blood-brain barrier. It binds to copper all along the way, um, including binding to the copper in the amyloid beta plaques. But what we didn't expect is, what it, is that it would stay stuck there. It bound so tightly to the copper in the plaques that it didn't take the copper away and carry it um, you know, away so the body could remove it. It kept it there, allowing copper to actually accumulate in the disease instead of being removed. So unfortunately, it looks like TTM is not a good treatment. And in fact, it made the disease worse. The one way it made it worse um, was we found that this, these rats that were treated with TTM um, actually showed the presence of little tiny microbleeds in the tissue. So you're looking at brain tissue in that pink and purple, and those purple spots that I've circled with red right there are little microbleeds in the brain, which we didn't see in the regular normal rats, but those that were treated with TTM, these microbleeds appeared, um, which leads to an um, elevated chance for stroke um, and cell death. So unfortunately, not only did TTM not work, it actually made the disease um, worse. So um, this is the way research works. <laughs> um, there's always good things and there's bad things about your findings. And so uh, on the minus side, uh, we did not find a treatment for Alzheimer's that could halt the disease by stopping and possibly removing these amyloid beta plaques. Um, but we, now we have a much better understanding of how copper chelators work. Um, and we have to watch out in diseases where we're treating um, Treat, being treated with copper chelators, like Wilson's disease, cancer, uh, et cetera, and make sure that we're using that TTM properly so that we're not accumulating copper and causing risk of stroke. Um, on the positive side, though, we also did learn that, um, copper, that TTM can actually bring copper to where it needs to go. Uh, and so it can be used for treating diseases that um, lead to copper deficiency, things like osteoporosis, reduced immune function, um, and Menke's disease. And with that, um, I would like to close by acknowledging uh, my research group at NSLS2 on the left. Uh, on the right is Bill Van Nostren and his research group at the University of Rhode Island. And I'd like to thank all of the Beamline staff at the Beamlines, that, uh, um, expert Beamline staff that helped us with these experiments, and then funding from both the National Institutes of Health and Department of Energy. Thanks for taking the time to listen to this talk.